Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Patreon cast for the week of February the 8th, 2024, it's going to be Clement Max Packs, a Wardy replay. So we're on site Delta, top left it's going to be Clem, bottom right it's going to be Max Pax. Two players ranked very high in the Oligulac rankings. Let's see where they are today while we're waiting for the game to start. Oligulac, yes. You know what I'm looking for, Google. You always do. Hmm, so, ooh, hang on a second. Uh, nope, no proxies, no SCV. I thought I saw a red dot on the minimap, but nope. Gateway inside the main base, very close to the Nexus here. And gas coming up. So Max Pax is currently ranked number three on the Oligulac rankings, and Clem is ranked number two on the Oligulac rankings. Hey, hey, so two monsters going at it here today. Doesn't get much better than this, does it? No. It really doesn't. So what's the play, man? Max Pack, checking for proxies. He's like, okay, there's no barracks over here, and SCB just showed up. Doesn't mean there's no proxies, though. This could be a second SCV sent in to make it seem like it's regular timing on the scout. And maybe an attempt to block the expand. Aha! The NG Bay block does go down. Of course it does. The NG Bay block is kaput. I'm gonna delay the expansion here for Max Pax. He throws down a cybernetics core and says, fine. Fine. No Reaper here from Clem. Marine on the way. In that barracks. And a cancel end in the NG Bay. There you go. 94 minerals back. Nice deal. And Nexus goes down. Post haste for our guy Max Pax. All right, man. So this is going to be splash damage on some level for Max Pax, whether a combination of Colossus or Disruptors here. Sometimes we see carriers against Terran, but I don't know what I'd risk it against somebody as good as Clem is. Although we saw Hurstum do it against, who was that, Maru on the channel? Like last year sometime, maybe a couple years ago, time has no meaning anymore. So, I don't know, sometimes you can go carriers against an elite Terran player, and it might, might actually even work out for ya. Hmm, factory on the way from Clem, no expansion yet. Ooh, this feels very dangerous for Max Pax. This feels very, very tricky for him to deal with, as we are going to reactor up the old factory. Immediately start building Hellions, and we're going to go for some Hellion pressure. There's a proxied starport here. Let's see. Let's see if this adept can find it. No way. No way. No way, no way, no way, no way. The firstborn shall persevere. That's right. The firstborn shall persevere. Who's the firstborn in that quote? I've never really thought about that before. Uh, okay, so get behind the wall. Get your flamethrowers up. If the adept wants to finish her shade. Oh, look. It, do you want to come roast her up? No? You can't kill this supply depot by yourself. I mean... She can give it enough time. It's just little bits of damage here. Still hasn't scouted this. <laughs> this is amazing. This is incredible. Is it going to be a Hellion drop? No. But you got to get the Hellions out there. Oh, the, he, oh, bait it in. Bait it in. And whooshed. That's right. You thought that Clem had messed up, but it was you who done messed up. That was neat. That was a good move by Clem. Feeling good about Clem right now. I do. We did one base. Well, he's got a second base coming up inside his main, which I think the Adept scouted. Yeah. So the Adept saw the second base and said, all right, whatever. Now we're going to meet up with our medevac that we built that I don't think Max Pax knows we have. And then there... Oh, look. How? How? Well, he knew the Hellion count, so we figured there might be some Hellion shenanigans, but they get into the natural base. Couple drones go down. Good split here from Max Pax the Dane. And five probes go down, swinging back into the main base. We are fast with the boost. And just even just softening up a few of these probes is good. All this lost mining time, too? 12, 13 probes go down. Ah, ah, ah. Medivac lives. Let's get back down into the natural base. Get some more probes down. 14. 14 probes die. This medivac is low on HP. These hellions are low on HP. <laughs> and finally, landing a second pace now is Clem. <laughs> Here at 4.30. He delayed it to get these workers dead, so check it out. It is 31 to 28 workers in favor of Clem. He's going to do... Yeah, I did a main art transfer down here. Sent those SCVs down to the natural base. Man, that is a... 
That is a phrase from the before times. Back when Brood War was new and shiny, there was an American player named Maynard who came up with the idea of when you have your second base created, you send some of your workers down from the first to your second, saturate it more quickly. It seems like a simple concept, but he was the first guy to come up with it. It was called a Maynard transfer. Pretty fancy stuff from Rui. I mean, we're talking pre-2000 here, ladies and gentlemen. Depp gets into the mineral line. Friendly Fire Splash is problematic. A Cyclone going to deal with her, no problem. And no SCVs die. I like it. Clem is buttoned up tight here. He's got Cyclones. He can deal with anti-air stuff. He's got Cyclones. He can deal with ground stuff. <laughs> the Stalkers are going to blink on up into the main base. Cyclones can trade with those, too. Ready, set, go. Here we go. Oh, man. Siege Tanks, Marines, and Cyclones. Look at these Stalkers being like, uh... We'll go in now. Wah -ha -ha. One volleying down SCVs. One, two, three, four. Blinking again. Maybe try to delay the construction on that engineering bay, but then they recall out. They get five SCVs. They get out without losing anybody. That was a good attack. From Max Pax. Charge on the way. For Max Pax, getting a couple more gateways here. No sign of a robotics bay. Really seems to be pretty interested in charge lots and stalkers for the time being. Maybe some sentries while we're at it, but for now, it's really just stalker, man. He has eight stalkers. We're working on plus one attack. Third base coming up for Max Pax. Need to have a little bit better economy to account for the fact that mules exist for the Terran player, whichever Terran player you're playing against. Unless the Terran doesn't use scans, in which case, never mind. Not a problem. If they're not using mules, you don't have to have a better economy. <laughs> but... Clem's going to use his mules, so today. War Prism on the way. A little bit easier way to get units inside the enemy main base rather than blinking them in there with an observer. Providing vision. War Prism can do all of that stuff. Stim finishing up. Combat shield on the way. Auto turret harass. Auto turret harassing. Sort of. One kill. Fine. Nothing crazy. Nothing at all. There's your robotics bay. There it is. Robotics Bay warping in from Shakuras, wherever the Protoss homeworld is right now. Can you set up... Hmm. Does it always have to be like the homeworld that these things are warping in from? Can you set up like an outer lying planet that you're warping in from when you're attacking another planet? Or like, can you set up something on the other side of this planet and you're warping in from there to this location? I never really thought about that before. A lot, of, a lot of questions bouncing around in my head today. Marauder count pretty heavy. Really good against Stalker, obviously. Zealots warping in down here. They're going to join this party. No, we're going to warp into the main base. The natural base, rather, of Clem here with his spinning polar bear icon. And then maybe try to blink on into the natural base too. Maybe blink into the main base. But these Marauders are marching about. So they poke in. Draw everybody out. Warp Prism says... Where is it? War Prism. War Prism. Okay, I expected it to not be hanging out right here, but okay. The Stalkers did their job. They drew, like, the entire Terran army away. Okay, all right, fine. I guess maybe we needed to draw them farther away. And guess what? Charge lots in your natural. Hee 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 hee. Stalkers are like, we cannot stand against this army. It's 85 to 53 army supply? Zealots get dealt with after four SCVs go down. Not the end of the world there from Clem. He's down. 61 to 41 workers, though. Not ideal. But also, again, this army difference. Oh, a Colossus is here. Extended Thermal Lance is not anywhere near done. Guardian Shield maybe going to get popped here. Force Fields instead. And Clem setting up. He says, is there maybe a base we can threaten over here? Can we? We can simultaneously go after the third base, which we just scanned, and the natural base from this spot. Blinking on top of the tank there. Tank down. Colossus getting some good swipes off even without the range upgrade. And I don't know. Max Max doing okay. Oh, boy. Except it's 75 to 29 army supplied. No, Colossus. Colossus died. Oh, bad place to pop, guy. This Colossus is doing fine. It's got nine kills already. Doesn't do bonus damage versus Marauders, but it does damage nevertheless. Zealots swinging in from the top side. Mm, not really getting a lot done there. South side here, too. Stabilizing. With 29 army supply now, is the Protoss player. Uh, 
the Max Pax is in a dire position. Economically, he's doing fine. He's got a nice economic advantage here with that third base, even with the presence of mules for the Terran economy. So, yeah, economically, great. If you didn't have a big army when the enemy tried to kill you, but you survived anyway, well, you're fine. I think that's the general rule here, right? <laughs> So, man, Max Pax kind of remind me of a Zerg there. Just having enough, just barely enough army to deal with the attack from the Terran. And then just benefiting immensely from massive economic advantages. Uh, trying to get Widowmine dropped over here, but the <laughs> the reburrow and the unburrow and the reburrow and the unburrow. All right, three probes go down to three Widowmines. Honestly, acceptable losses if you're Max Pax. It's about as good as you can get here. Glimpse third base, rolling that economic difference. Woo! Going up, especially with that probe pull from the natural base. They're back working now. So it is going back down towards Max Packs, but I don't know how much further it's going to go with this third base rolling for Clem. And no fourth base yet for Max Packs. He doesn't have the money to expand yet. He's Now he does. As I'm saying that sentence, he gets it. We got a Ghost Academy coming in. It is getting to basically late game TVP at this point, and having Ghost is going to be nice. EMPs in particular. Maybe nukes? Who knows? And yeah, I do want to point out this is a Warty replay. So check him out. Part of a tournament that he specifically set up and cast. Check him out. Oh, link to the YouTube. Nice dodge there. Nice blink dodge. Link to his Twitch in the description as well. Go check him out. Go say hey. Gosh, you could still auto turret her ass up here. This Raven's got five kills. It's been doing just fine. When behind Dark Shrine, says Max Pax. I am behind in army value, worker count, overall supply, which is just the combination of those two numbers. So let's get a Dark Shrine up. Let's try to maybe just poke in. That's the nice thing about soccer is you don't have to commit. You can poke in, snipe down a Marauder, and blink out without really taking any losses at all. It's extremely frustrating to play against in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing, and guess what? Max Pax knows what he's doing. Max Pax is fourth base, warps in, cha cha More Colossus on the way. There are three of them. Fourth one in production, never hurt anything. Zealots, eat some Widow Mines. And <laughs> get evaporated. And then more Zealots wander into the third base and go after the Widow Mines. And can they deal with this bunker? They decide... Maybe not. Let's... Oh, my gosh. This Widow Mine count is actually kind of... Ugh, he tried to split off. Didn't quite work there. Trying to threaten at the front here is Clem. Shield batteries. Colossus helping. These Zealots get chased off, and Widow Mine takes down two more of them. Widow Mine is a good unit. A lot of the time. Sometimes it's kind of bad, but standing in and fighting against four Colossus with a shield battery overcharged. Nice. Viking snipes off one of the Colossuses. And Disruptors have been added to the mix here, too. DT Blink on the way. DT is warping in. This auto turret, friends. He killed a cannon. Six kills on this Raven. My goodness. Pushing in at the fourth base again. Clem just trying to find purchase. While dodging disruptor balls and while trying not to get murdered by the lasers. Oh, we got a pile on. That's something. Vikings. Trying to be microed perfectly against the Stalkers while trying to hit the Colossuses. We know the deal here. Observer sneaks in to see what's going on. And was there... There must have been a DT in here, huh? Doesn't have DT blink yet. So that Observer is going to keep itself alive so that it can help the DT blink into the main base of Clem later is my guess. Disruptors. Oh, a little bit lazy on that pullback from Clem. Does lose a couple Marauders to that, which is a little bit more than you would hope for in a situation like that. Like, in the chaos of a massive engagement, sure, maybe a disruptor will kill some stuff, but it was just nothing else is going on, right? Planetary takes out that DT. Yeah, when you're just sort of moving away from Purification Novas, you should move away far enough that you don't take a hit from said Purification Nova. Your units are fast. Liberators being added in for Clem. Not a lot of production in the main base. Actually, got a couple barracks in the natural. Uh, that's about it. A ton of barracks production here. Vikings have been produced a lot. Medivacs 
Liberator, so Star Ports are going to be a big part of what we're seeing here. Although I say that, and he throws up some additional barracks, because he does need those. But yeah, this is a Patreon cast. For those of you who support me on patreon.com slash Paladin for at least $1 a month, you get to see this the week of February 8th, 2024, a month before anybody else on the YouTube channel. Nova's Do Not Hits. So if you're watching it that week, I love you. Thank you so much for the support out here, even for as little as a dollar a month. I appreciate all of it. And if you're watching this in March 2024 or late February, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Mm, good face, getting harassed. Zealots running wild inside the natural base of Clem. But the fifth base of Max Pax is going to die. It does not get canceled. SCVs are dying. Liberator going to deal with these zealots fairly effectively. But they're like, okay, well, you're not protecting this uh, supply depot very well, are you? Oh, he's drawing the zealots into the Liberator circle by bringing the SCVs in. That was pretty good. I got to say that was a pretty sweet move. Zealots not quite smart enough to avoid that trap. Maybe try to go into the main base? I think they were holding the top of that ramp. This zealot, man. Three kills, not bad. Ten SCVs go down. Income tab, about even, which is not really where you want to be if you are uh, if you are a Protoss player here. Actually, well, that does make sense, actually, doesn't it? Anyway, charging in. Widowmine catches one. Nice split there. One of the zealots gets caught in. Woo! Colossus getting obliterated there. But just marching up into the natural base is Max Pax anyway. He's using Novas to keep the army from getting in here while the natural base is being ravaged further because the Zealots already did a whole lot of that. Nova, nice catch on a couple of those Marines, but the Colossus are gone. Vikings, ooh, I don't know what they're flying in there for. Maybe checking for more Colossus, but no. There weren't any. Army value 85 to 66 in favor of Max Pax. This dude, man. Oh, nice dodge on the Novas there, but this is looking. Your natural base is toast. Your SCV count is not great. It's not ravaged. 61 workers is still fine. Clem's got an expansion up here uh, at the you know 11 o'clock position, but... Oh, this third base. Once again, the Nova's being used to keep the Terran ground army at bay while Stalkers and Zealots destroy this third base. 17 more SCVs go down. And every time he pokes in, bam, Nova. And bam, Nova. And trying to save the orbital. Blinks in, takes it down, has to stand and fight. Nice, Nova, hit. Yeah. 75 to 57 army supply. A new round of charge lots comes in. And I Clem GG's out. That's it. I was going to say, those zealots were enough to turn the tide. And Max Pax gets that win in 17 minutes. That was astounding. What a killer PVT that was. That felt like a 25 minute PVT, but that's just how it is, man. Once the aggression starts, it doesn't really stop. Max Pax is blinking into Clem's base. Clem is doing Widowmine drops at Max Pax Natural. Stalkers are inside the main of Clem. There are zealots running free inside the natural. They're poking at the third base of Max Pax. It's just back and forth, never end, never end, never ending. Resources lost, 26,000 to 23,000. Clem lost more in a PVT, and that's usually not a great sign. Two orbitals got killed in comparison to one Nexus. 21 Widow Mines, did they pay for themselves today? Uh, hard to say. I'd say they were close. I'd say they were close to paying for themselves today, but maybe not uh, Maybe not 100% of the way there, you know? I think that's probably fair, fair to say. We've got 10 ghosts went down. Man, I didn't even really notice the ghosts going down today. I assume they were tossing down EMPs, but it was so hard for them to get close enough to do that with the Purification Novas coming in over and over and over again. The use of Novas here by Max Pax was magnifique. It was so good. 28 probes died. 43 SEVs went down. Income tab was looking like this at the end. And yeah, there was a time Clem had some good advantages economically, but those are dead now. Those are now entirely gone. Five Colossus died. Every one of the Colossus has died. That's massive. That is honestly massive. But if you've got six Disruptors remaining and seven Stalkers and 12 Zealots with plus three attack and plus one armor, maybe you can get some work done here. 15 Vikings were produced to deal with the Colossuses. They did their job. They really did. 
But at the end of the day, once the Colossuses are gone, you're going to fight Stalkers? I mean, you landing, you do bonus damage versus mechanical, so kind of, but didn't really work out in that way, right? Right, right. 100 Marines died. 47 Marauders died. It was a bloodbath on both sides for sure, but Max Pax got the better end of it. Truly, truly better end of it. So... GG! That was... Man, that was a ton of fun. What a fantastic PVT. The number two and number three ranked players in the world. You better believe it was a good PVT. And it was. So thanks again for watching. And that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.